<laughs> we'll crack on with our first topic, which is going to be season wrap up. Uh, the Premier League season has come to a close with Arsenal left in eighth position, their lowest since 94 95. Um, Leif, this season's had its own fair share of uh, drama. Um, how have you seen it? And looking at that league table, how does it make you feel? This season's gone on forever. I tweeted on uh, Sunday, I covered the game at the Emirates, um, Arsenal's 3-2 victory over Watford. Um, and I basically said, literally 11 and three quarter months ago, I was in the new Camp um, for Barcelona Arsenal with 99,000 other people. And that was Arsenal. That was my first Arsenal game of the season of the 1920 season. And literally, oh, almost a year later, we're still here and we're still talking about this season. I'm just knackered. I've just had enough of it now in terms of the league. Um, eighth position is probably better than what we could have expected um, in the dark days of uh, Unai Emery um, before he was sacked. So, you know, Arteta's come in. He's had a big job to do and he's still got a big job to do. Massive rebuilding job. But he's shown that he's not a manager or a head coach to be mucked around with. He's, he's very much shown that he's his own man. He's got true principles. He's got a real clear footballing ethos and um, and his tactics are coming together as well. Um, I think Arsenal can look forward to next season, but Cron the Cronkies have to release some money. They have to open the purse strings and give Arteta some money so he can mould a team that will uh, avoid such a disappointing season as this one we've just had. Obviously, we've got the cup final on, on Saturday, but it doesn't feel like the cup final. It doesn't feel like cup final week. I've been to enough of them over the years and it um, just doesn't feel like it. Maybe because no one's going to go. You know, there's, there's, there's a handful of journalists. Obviously, the players are going to be there and, and that's it. There's no... All the fans I've talked to are going to watch it and, and enjoy it and, and, and relish the win, but it won't be the same and it doesn't feel the same. So, the sooner this season is over, the better. Obviously, I want us to win on Saturday. I hope we do beat Chelsea because we're in Europe as well and that will bring some additional funds much needed funds too as well so um, yeah let's just get to the FA Cup final hopefully win it and just move on from this season which felt like it feels like it's gone on forever and another point before I forget as well is um, the Scottish season for 2021 starts on Saturday morning well the English season for 1920 is still you know, yeah, not finished until until the end of the cup final, really. So, so what season is it on Saturday? I've got no idea. So, um, yeah, it's been a long year and um, I'm looking forward to a couple of weeks off. Yeah, yeah. And, Serge, do you think what should be taken from that eighth place is that the Cronkies need to be looking at that first and foremost? Because Arteta's come in and he's done a good job and shown, shown good signs for the, for the future. But something needs to be taken from this really, really poor season. Yeah, I mean the season overall was one of the worst we've seen for a very long time, and it was just it was just draining from like November onwards. It was just one thing after another. You know, the losing to Brighton back then, you know, the loss to um, Aston Villa. Sorry, the draw with Watford, the draw with Aston Villa. It was just very very dull to start with, and I don't know how much investment they can we can really expect because obviously without the Champions League money, without any sort of real funds coming from the European tours, we're going to be very skint. I can't see the Cronkies being able to really put the money in. We need, we did a lot. We need, you know, a good creative midfield. We need proper defence. You know, basically, we've got a good goalkeeper and a good attacker that we can really rely upon. But the rest of it can always be improved. And I think the money that we're going to require is, it's just not feasible. So, as much as it's a joy to see Arteta, I think next season will be much of the same. Yeah, yeah, Dan. I mean, do you see that as being a Another season, next season of sort of building rather than, you know, a huge step up to getting back to top four already? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, as, as I said, we, we, we've got two players I think we can really rely on and the rest, you know, you maybe look, you could do more or you're not even going to be here next season. So there's, there's a lot to do in the summer, but I just personally don't think we're going to have the funds. I mean, Leif and I had quite a long discussion about it on a video you can watch on the channel and you know, we, I think we both came to the conclusion that we're in a lot of trouble this summer. You know, we we didn't have any money to start with and now we've been hit by the, the coronavirus pandemic and it's just made the situation worse. So, yeah, a lot of work to do, um, both on and off the pitch. But, yeah, as I say, I don't think the fans will be there. Yeah, yeah. And do you think Arteta, being the fact, like that he came in sort of, you know, halfway through the season with a decimated squad and decimated club and fans that were, you know, miserable... Do you think that he won't take ownership of that eighth place? Do you think he'll be looking past that? 
Good question. I, I think he will take ownership of it because it ultimately it's his responsibility, albeit one that um, Emery started with, basically. Um, Arteta knows what he's responsible for and, and knows what he isn't, basically. And he knows that the club need to give him more money. Equally, he, he was saying the other day, basically, that if Arsenal win the FA Cup and finish eight, it's still not a good season. That's what I want to hear from a, from an Arsenal head coach. I want I don't want excuses for, for being second best. I don't want pity. I don't want, you know... Any, any sort of nonsense, really. And Arteta's a straight-talking guy. He'll give you, you know, what you see is what you get, basically. He'll give you an honest answer. And he, he is not happy with this season, basically. Um, and he wants to build on it. And he wants to improve it. And he wants to shape the squads in, in his own fashion. I think you guys, or whoever said it was being a bit harsh when he said we've only got two players um, that we can really build on. Kieran Tierney was, was absolutely immense um, on Sunday, as he has been for a few games since um, since the restart, basically, after lockdown. So, um, you know, I, I think, again, I tweeted out on Sunday from the Emirates press box that he just needs a run of form, he needs a run of games, he needs to stay fit and he'll be such an immense player for Arsenal next season um, and he'll add so much to the squad as well So and the team and the starting eleven. So I, I feel a bit more positive basically. We've also got a raft of young players who will, who will only improve as well. We've signed Saka on a long-term deal. We've got Martinelli who hopefully will be fit before the end of the year. It's a real blow to lose him um, on a long-term injury. But th- th- there's a lot of hope there. There's a lot of there's a lot of basis for hope as well. It's just we need some top quality to be um, drafted into the squad to add to what we've got already. And if they can keep Aubameyang, Aubameyang was was excellent on Saturday, uh, Sunday even. Although admittedly Watford were were really really poor. Um, certainly defensively, and they missed their chances. They could have, they could have scored three or four goals to win the game, and then it would have been very interesting to see who um, who went down. For what it's worth, I thought they were far more attacking than um, than Villa were, and I went to that game as well at Villa Park last week. Um, it is what it is. The league table doesn't lie. Arsenal eight. We're an eight-place side, basically, this season. Let's hope the FA Cup has some gloss on it, but there are major changes. But Arteta knows that, and he will work as hard as he can to get that, get that, get, get everything in place for next season, basically, which, as we know, will now start on um, September the 12th. Yeah, definitely. And so, is that actually something Leif said sort of counters what you were saying about next season being much the same, is that there are a lot of players who can improve next season in terms of the youngsters, and as well, some players that have had untapped potential and who have, you know, being demotivated for whatever reason. Do you think that there is enough there to improve on this league position next season with the same uh, squad? No. <laughs> Short and simple. I don't, I don't think... You know, the Arsenal's been in a drop of form for several seasons now. Finishing eighth this season, it, it, it goes to show that we've been in a drop of form for far, far, you know, for far too long. And all we're seeing now is the other teams around us are improving. Watford are a better side. Leicester are a better side. Sheffield United have improved. The other teams in the league are better. You know, 10, 20 years ago, there was, only three, there was only two or three really good teams and the rest of them were very middle table. So I think this is more representative of what we've seen over the years. And to answer your question, obviously we've got good youth. That's no doubt. We're all very excited by all the players we've got. But I think we've got to keep on the teams around us. We're not the only team that have got an impressive team, like squad dynamic. We're not the only team that's investing money, you know, Look at Chelsea, they're buying left, right and centre. Man City, you know, they, they can afford to buy anything they want. Liverpool have already got a great squad. You know, I think Spurs have got to put some investment in as well. So we've got a real battle around us. And I don't think that anything's going to change significantly next season to further our position. Be interested to get your take on that, Dan. Um, well, touching on the youth, I mean... I think, yeah, we've got a really strong youth setup at the moment. Obviously, a lot of players coming through. Stop laughing, Serge. Uh, um, but you worry, about, you worry about burnout, you know. You look at someone like Jack Wilshire, for example. Think about, you know, the amount of games he played as a youngster. Um, and, you know, he's obviously had a lot of injury problems since. And, you know, you could argue that that was because of the amount of football he played, he played as a youngster. So you think someone like Martinelli, who's now got this serious, well, Possibly serious knee problem. If that is that the beginning of something that's going to go on for his career and he's going to limit appearances, we don't know. So I think you know playing youngsters at the moment and them having that kind of fearless element where they're you know willing to run through walls for Arteta as we've seen them do is a good thing. But what's going to happen down the line if they play too many games now? And then also you need to have the experience around them, but reliable experience, not not someone like Louise, for example, who has got a lot of experience but isn't the most reliable of players. Um, so, yeah, I just think we need to be careful with, with the amount of minutes that we give in the youth players. 
Yeah, yeah. And Leif, looking forward, I mean, this summer, do you think the fact that it's going to be such a reduced summer break, do you think that'll hurt Arteta in terms of there's a lot to sort out, you know, with Ozil, Guendouzi and the rest of the squad? Do you think that that shorter period between the end of the season and the start of the season is going to hurt Arteta? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think he'll do any favours. I, I think he could have really benefited from a full pre-season um, just to just to shake the squad. That said, um, there's not many new managers who will um, who will come into a team and a club that is maybe not in disarray but but needs a lot of work done, and then literally the shutters come down after three months to give you three months of reflection. And I think that's obviously what's happened to to Arteta um, during lockdown. He he is basically the season's obviously stopped, as we all know. So he's had the immediacy of each game, preparing for each game, taken away from him. So he can sit there and he can reflect. And he's a deep thinker, and he will have done a lot of thinking about the team and the squads and how he can improve and what he's got already. And I think um, his the, the the way Ozil's been frozen out is a reflection of that. I think he's just thought, do you know what? I really, really cannot work with him. He certainly cannot work with us. He don't. He can't buy into the ethos that I want of a pressing game from the top. Um, I'm just going to freeze him out. And then it's down to the club to, to see what they did. Now, Emery tried to do that, but he wasn't strong enough to keep it going, basically. So um, I think Arteta has benefited from the three-month lockdown in terms of being able to to think about the, the squad and the team. You know, obviously, thankfully, after he, he recovered from um, coronavirus, but equally, not having a full pre-season um, will affect a new manager in the way he wants to shape the side. But then... Uh, it's the same for everyone, basically. Although, admittedly, as the guy said, there's teams um, with a, with a better squad, bigger squad, um, potentially you know more talented players as well um, that, that are ahead of the curve as well. So, um, yeah, I, I think I'd would love two months now, or a month, or six weeks, or whatever, or or even longer to, to shape the side, to work them on work them on every day on training in training in uh, London County and. You know, on, on a long haul pre season trip, basically, but it's not going to happen, so he's got to get on with it. And I, I he's obviously been preparing for that anyway. So the next stage is Bamiyan, give him a contract, Ozil, get him out of the club, and work out what you're going to do with Gwendozi, basically. <laughs>